What's up, guys and gals? Chris the Bonafide Hustler here, coming to you live from the inside of my office. Hopefully, you guys can hear me well. There was a live feed as well, um, if it's a live show. But anyway, so uh, I want to show you the finds that I found from uh, last weekend's thrift store and garage sale haul. So it should be a lot of fun. Plus, there's a little bit of extra stuff that I want to show you guys. So with that, let me know if I sound good, and uh, we'll get it. We're gonna get right to the haul. So I went garage selling last weekend. I'm always like, okay. So if you've been watching my recent videos for the past week or two weeks, you guys know that I have a little bit of an issue at the antique booth, which is, you know, I sell stuff on eBay, Amazon, my antique booth, um, Craigslist as well, and then consignment stores in town. So. Uh, for my booth, I have an issue, and it's, it's a good issue, right? It's an issue like, okay, I can't keep enough stock of this one thing. So I made a video about the top five things that sell in my booth. I discussed the issue quite extensively, but essentially I need more cowboy boots in my uh, booth. So anyways, hopefully you guys can see me. Let me make sure. I think we have one viewer in the house right here, two viewers. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see me well. So I do have a bit of a booth issue in my booth. Uh, antique booth booth issue a boot issue and uh so for a dollar at a garage sale i'm like okay i'm spending a lot literally up so almost 14 15 on a pair of boots now just to like get my boot wall back to normal so these were a dollar at the garage sale they have a little bit of a repair right you can kind of see it right there all right and they are ostrich okay so these are um full quill ostrich tony llamas but because they have um you know wear and tear on them and they have this professional repair done it looks like still i'm not going to go the ebay route on this and i'm going to probably put this in my booth somewhere within the vicinity of about maybe 40 to 80 bucks so that's what i'm thinking right here these were a dollar at a garage sale so i'm definitely looking for more of these things the the pair of boots i bought before this were 15 dollars at a goodwill uh, before that was a five dollar pair at a garage sale so i'm really trying hard to get my booth wall back up to normal in my antique booth but you know suppose that uh, actual repair wasn't there and um you know it had this much wear and tear just normal um you could still probably get somewhere in the vicinity of you know maybe 60 to 100 on ebay for these right here and of course as the color gets a little bit better like sometimes the more orangish type colors and the more yellowish type colors like people really like those a lot so this is a norm more standard kind of like dark brown one so tony llama is a really good boot brand um but i'm not going to go the ebay route on this one right here good to see everybody good to see you um at a thrift store i believe i spent 10 bucks on these and um these are some of the most, the ones you really, really, really want to look for. So we have um, Wingtip Brogue, I guess what, I guess that's what it's called. But these, these basically you can put the derby term to these, and I like that a lot. So people that do derby type things or the horse racing type stuff, Kentucky Derby, where they wear, you know, wear the white pants or their, you know, sometimes Easter looking colors, plus these shoes. Um, that's one of the biggest keywords that'll help propel these into what I think to be 80 or hundred dollar category. So these are Kohan Nike air. All right. Nike air Kohans. Um, they I bought them for $10 and 81 cents. And, um, these are going to try to get some of the vicinity of 80 to hundred bucks. But yes, I will be using the term Derby wingtip Oxford more than likely. Um, and Kohan Nike air with the men's size. So and it's a good men's size too. I think it's a 10 and a half or something like that. Yeah. 10 and a half M, which is just an amazing seller. So that's a pretty good one right there. Thought that was a really good find. I mean, they're in great shape. We don't have a whole lot of heel rub or anything like that. Um, when you look at it from this angle, we don't have a whole lot of like, I don't know. It's where you see people's um, issues when in their gait and their step, but sometimes you see like the edges are really like angled and you don't want that, right? You want to find nice flat ones like this. I like that. A little bit of a, you know, angling thing right here, but it's not too bad. Um, the undersides look pretty good. Um, but yeah, shoes are real good. I always try to hustle as many shoes as possible. I just ordered 25 shoe boxes the other day from USPS.com and they are free shoe boxes as long as you use priority. So check that out, USPS.com. I believe it's under priority supplies and then free supplies. And then there's an actual thing called a shoe box in there, which the way I kind of do it is I build half and I build half of the shoe box, obviously, and I leave the other end open. I put two pieces of bubble wrap squares that are about 12 by 12s. I put two of those in the bottom. I put these like this right into the shoe box. And then I make sure there's a piece of bubble wrap like right around here. And then two squares at the top, close the top and you're done. So that's kind of like how I do it. I really try to keep the same kind of stuff going on when I'm, when I do these boxes and I have, you know, the, the last time I did these boxes, I had four or five pairs of shoes I had to do. And um, 
I like doing certain things at certain times. So like I do all the pictures at once, then I do all the, you know, removing stickers at once, then I do all the, you know, shoe boxing up at once. And so when you do that and you have five shoe boxes laying upright, you can just drop them in real quick. You know, you put two squares of bubble wrap in the bottom, drop in all your shoes, put in the squares in the middle, and then two squares at the top. And that's kind of how I like to do it. I haven't had any, you know, uh, negative feedback from that. And people really, really like it. So yeah, 15 by eight by five. I, I put 15, eight, six in my, um, when I ship them off, right? I just, because of, I think the five one is a little bit closer to six, but that's what I do. If it, I call them, they're 15, eight, six, you know, measurements. Typically when you're shipping off shoes or something like that, that fits in that box, it's going to be somewhere around uh, a pound or 1.14 all the way up to, you know, maybe like three pounds, but you know, it's a priority shoe box. It's free. You guys got to go check it out. So anyways, um, cool. What's up team hit check. Good to see you. And uh, yeah, so anyways, yes, it's hot in Austin, Texas, why I have a, this on right here. Let's go uh, talk about the next thing that I've bought. Now, the market's a little thinner on this, but I decided to you know check it out. So what we have here are Merrill, I forgot the name of these shoes, but they're women's Merrill, Gore-Tex, waterproof, not Gore-Tex, but waterproof Merrills. Um, they were $10.81, going to be shooting between $60 and $80 for these, and they're nice. Forgot the actual, I mean, they have a thing called Espresso inside as a color, but it's not the actual name of the boot. So um, I forgot. But anyways, uh, you just run the product codes inside the tab right here. You look inside. I mean, the Merrill logo looks real good. The actual um, sizing sticker and everything is nice and like not crinkly and not wrinkled or anything like that. So that's one thing I look for for overall wear and tear. And then you look at the bottom, and we pretty much have what's called a nubs on nub situation where um, you can kind of tell the primary wear nubs are still kind of there on the shoe so they look really really good so that was ten dollars and 81 cents i thought it was a really solid find and uh 60 to 80 bucks is what i'll be asking for these these i believe should still be able to fit into the usps priority shoe box as well because they are um chukka style more like ankle style but anytime you get boot or hiking boot you can't put those in the in those uh boxes you're gonna have to find another box for that kind of stuff but the usps uh free box yeah you put it pretty much put it like this and uh, I should be good to go. It might be like that, but it's probably going to be like this in the box, just like that. So pretty solid pickup. I thought it was good. I always loved messing with shoes. When I was at a garage sale this past weekend, I found this. This was a probably a really good dollar find. And uh, who wants to guess the brand of this thing right here? It's a beautiful belt. I'm pretty sure someone will guess the brand in about two seconds, especially if you hustle belts. Now, I hustle belts, but I don't do it at a very like large scale. In fact, I probably do like one every like six months or something like that. So it's just, this might go to my booth. This might go on eBay. I'm not hundred percent sure. All I knew is that for a dollar, it was definitely worth picking up. So who wants to guess the brand of this belt? I'll show it to you right there. It's a pretty nice belt, little Texan style ranch style belt. That was a pretty good, good pickup. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll put this in the booth. There's like some small, small wear and tear nothing crazy, but a little bit of delamination right here. Um, the, you know, this, this belt maker is definitely known for like ends like this. Um, and Tony Lama ones make like that too, but yeah. So like, what do you guys think? If you hustle belts, you're getting, you guys are getting sort of close, not really close, but sort of close. So we have garage flips in the house, death piles. They're all Tony Lama, Justin, I'll give you a hint. It starts with the letter B. All right. So everyone should know it by this. I mean, but if you don't hustle belts that much, and you don't know really what to look for. Um, and if you're only looking for like Gucci and Prada belts and stuff like that, then yeah, you probably wouldn't know about this type of stuff. But uh, so this is a company called Brighton and Brighton belts, not all of them, but Brighton belts in good condition could fetch some pretty good money on eBay. Um, but it's usually in the vicinity of like 30 to 60 bucks, but that's still pretty good money, if, especially if it's a belt that fits in a first class kind of envelope. That's right, Sherry Sanders, it's Brighton. So I'll show you uh, the Brighton thing right here. This is what it looks like. So check that out. If you ever get around to, uh, you know, hustling belts, start looking for this brand. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's a good brand. Go to eBay, you know, used, used for the past 90 days, completed, and take a look at Brighton belts. I mean, I think you'll be kind of surprised what you see. But yeah, you know, first class rates, you just coil them all up, put them in a padded poly, and you're done. You don't even have to put them in the uh, USPS padded poly because that one will get you a, a flat rate. You don't want that. You want to put it in its own padded poly just like that and man this will be a first class rate all day sub 16 ounces and that's the way to hustle this thing right here so a brighton belt pretty solid pickup probably gonna go to the booth i'm gonna be asking 20 to 30 for this one right here in the booth um what else did i find from the garage sale so i did go to um 
I found some really cool things. Hopefully, you guys will appreciate these things. So, I went to a garage sale. I think I spent thirty dollars at this garage sale. I'm gonna show you what I picked up for thirty bucks. You guys ready? All right. So, uh, thirty bucks. <laughs> I think these, okay, let me, let me kind of wait till the viewers, are you guys ready to see this? Because I want my viewers to go like over 50 before I show this one thing. So I'll show some of the stuff that I got for 30 bucks. And, uh, you know, I think we're at the appropriate age group to where we know the kind of cars that are these right here. Um, so let me see. We got 50 viewers. All right, cool. So we're ready to see this stuff. What's up, Debbie Porter? Good to see you. Sherry Sanders in the house. Don Wilson says, "I see Brighton belts fairly often. Yeah, Brighton belts are cool. You know, I don't I don't pop the trigger on all of them because for some reason when I find them they're pretty used up. But if I find a really good one that is not used up, I definitely will pick it up. All right, we got 51 in the house. Okay, so I picked up. Uh, this is one of the things I got for 30 bucks. Okay, and this is going to be perfect for my booth because these are all um, they're not really vintage cars, but retro cars. So." These are all cars from the 80s era and early 90s era. So we have, a, these are all 1988 Ravel die cast cars. As far as I know, let me make sure. Uh, this is a Durago. Okay, so that one's not a Ravel, but most of these other ones are Ravels. Like I know this one's a Ravel. All right, so there's a Ravel Countach, right? Or Countach, whatever you want to say it. That was, uh, everything is marked two bucks in here, but you know, when you do bundling and everything and you're really smart about it and you realize just through, basic syntax and basic um you know how the people speak to you um you can kind of tell like urgency like if the person's like make me an offer like ah, whatever man just make me an offer those are the kind of words and prompts that you should be like digesting and go okay this means this person really doesn't want any of the prices that they're stating and it's more or less a clearing kind of situation like they want to just get rid of stuff so 30 bucks this was one of the things in there there's a countach right there i'm gonna probably be asking somewhere between you know six and 12 for that in the booth we have a durago i guess that's what it's called um burago or durago anyways it's 1984 gto right here it's a 124 scale a really nice car you know and it's a die cast one pretty cool Pro missing the engine cover in the back not a big deal six to 12 in my booth all day um, little things like this or toys or, you know, people love this kind of stuff in the booth. Here we have a rally car. So Barago, it's a Lancia, right? Which is definitely a car that is definitely, you know, made overseas. Like you don't see Lancias here in the States, like ever, unless you're at a really cool car meet or something like that. We have a 959 Porsche, um, which is one of the, I want to say it's one of the first cars to ever break 200 miles an hour. Maybe, um, this is a 124 scale 959. It is 1988. Perfect for the booth right there. Six to $12 all day. Um, we have this one, which is a very, very amazing car. And even the steering wheel is like, you know, rotating the tires on this one. Who knows what this car is? Come on. Like, I want to know who knows what this car is. This is such an iconic car. Like you should know what this is, right? Everyone should know it. There's the back. There's the side. Let me know if you know that one, same situation, six to 12 bucks. Here we have, everyone knows this one. This is a Cobra. Um, this one also has the 427 logo on the side. But it's interesting because I don't see the side. I want to say the 427 actually had um, the muffler right here, right, with you know drill holes or whatever. But I don't think there was ever a 427 that had exhaust out the back. Am I wrong? That's right. This is a Testarossa. You're right. So everyone who guessed Testarossa, you're right. And someone said Magnum PI. I think Magnum PI had a 308. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a GTO, but it was a three. It was one of those. Anyways, my Magnum PI car is a little different. So here we have a 427 Cobra for all the guys in the chat that might, you know, love these cars or whatever. Um, and maybe gals too. Um, did the 427 ever come without the uh, exhaust on the side? Let me know. There's a standard Cobra, Shelby Cobra. Pretty cool. This one looks like it's missing the front bumper things, the little steel things right there. Who cares? Six to 12 in my booth all day. Um, we have this one, which is a very, uh, I got I got the wheel fixed on this one, not fixed, but just uh, the tire back on. Um, this is a 19, uh, this is a ZR1, which is interesting. So if you know about Corvettes, I want to say it's a 1990 something. I, I can't remember, but um, this is a Corvette, right? This is a, what, second gen? I have no idea. Um, but a ZR1, nevertheless, pretty cool. That's right. So Christian St. Ange says, in Magnum PI, the, I think he had a 308, which is this uh, Ferrari car that they're driving, that Tom Selleck would drive in his movies. Okay, so this one right here, six to 12 bucks in my booth as well. We have a standard Corvette, maybe a second gen, something like that. Um, but it's a ZR1, right? Not that it makes a difference, but if you ever get a chance to really see a ZR1 in life, they are totally cool, especially I think the ZR1 might have 
maybe this is the first year of it or something like that. But a ZR1 basically is a, you know, how they have like Corvette, then they have like Z06, and they have ZR1. Um, there was no Z06 back in this day. In fact, um, it was just Corvette and then this, I think. Um, and the ZR1 is like mega rare. If you're ever at a car show and you see one of these model ZR1s, they are totally awesome. They're wider than normal Corvettes. They're lower profile, um, and they have a bigger they have a bigger battery motor, whatever. And they also have part of the windshield that is how do I say it? It's like almost non-tinted or something like that to where the radar detector is supposed to go on it and everything. It's really wild. So it's a very fast car. Um, back in the day, it was like, you know, very, very, very rare to find one. But uh, essentially, that's the Corvette one right there, 6 to 12 bucks. And then we have a 60s maybe Corvette Stingray. I think this is 60s. It could be 70s. I think it's 60s though. Anyway, we have the uh, split rear window on that one. There's actually one of these in my neighborhood. Um, and that'll be 6 to 12 bucks. Okay, so that's what I found right there. That's part of the $30 haul. There you go. Some basic car education right there. That's going to go, you know, 6 to 12 bucks each one. And I, I would assume that they would just kind of be a really good mid-grade kind of sell. Like, there won't be a long-tail thing. They'll just be mid-grade. Like, every now and then when I'm checking what's sold in the evening time on my list, I'll see one of those pepper in here and there. So, cool. Don Wilson says that was a 60s Corvette. All right, so this is a 60s Stingray, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, now, here's kind of interesting things. <laughs> I'll show... This last thing that's like, I think is mega interesting. In fact, that was like the big thing that like led me to that sale. Not led me there, but when I got there, I was like, oh my God, like I totally got to get that. So these were marked $5 a piece. This is part of the $30 haul. So I'm going to show you some really cool vintage shirts. I like these a lot. So if you guys are ready and you can appreciate good vintage shirts, let me know. You know, if you see one that you like, just be like, oh, that's pretty sweet or whatever. Remember, the comment feed is active right now. Like, if you're watching this and it's a live show and it says live, like, it's active. So you can kind of just interact. Here's the first shirt right here. I like this one a lot. I thought it was pretty cool. This is a, what is it, Yellowstone? No, it's something else. This is a Revel Stoke, British Columbia. It's an old shirt, uh, probably in the 80s, maybe 90s. We got some wolves howling right there. I like it. God, I'm so tempted to keep this one. This one's so cool. Um, it's made by Cityscape. It's a large. Boy, this actually might fit me. I like that one a lot. Good colors. It's not too wild. Um, if you want a good laugh, check out the Three Wolves shirt Amazon listing and then read the reviews. Like if you just want to laugh for a little bit, you want to, you know, get 20 minutes to kill, just go check out the reviews on the Three Wolves shirt uh, that's on Amazon. And it's a, it's a currently made shirt. Like you can buy it. But this is definitely a vintage one right here. We got a fat vintage collar right there. Um, and it's made by <clears throat> a brand called Cityscape. This right here would be a $20 or $30 shirt in my booth all day, like all day. So that's one of the things I found. We have another. This was made by Jersey. So a little bit more current day on this one. This is a standard California with some cool 80s kind of look to it, you know, pretty nice. Uh, nice fat collar, um, but it's a Jersey. So I would date this one somewhere in the mid-2000s or something like that. Pretty cool. It's a California shirt. That's going to be about... A twenty twenty four dollars shirt in my booth. <clears throat> we have this one right here, which I thought this was really neat. This one's very colorful. This one says American Thunder on the back. We have a Caribbean Dream large shirt right here. This is probably more like a twenty dollars shirt in my booth, but very very active and like there's a lot going on, right? So here we go. Forever Free Indian one with some wolves and some lightnings. Pretty cool. My God, I might confidently say this could be a twenty five dollars shirt just because. You know, like my booth gets visited by a lot of hipsters in town. It's just the whole antique mall that I am part of gets visited by a lot of hipsters. And hipsters love stuff like this. So, yeah, you know, like a 25. You know, that's one thing is if the hipster goes like, oh, you know, it's kind of like a steep price for that shirt. But the other thing that the hipster is also thinking is, yeah, but it's the only one in town. That's the thing. You know, like good luck finding this thing in town somewhere else outside of my booth. And so for that, there is a premium to that, right? So go check it out. And I don't say hipsters in a very in a very derogatory way or whatever. Hipsters are just trying to find something that's very unique. And um, yeah, they're just hippie hipster. Like they got, I don't know, really fresh haircuts and skinny jeans and lumberjack shoes, but they don't cut any lumber. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just really weird. But anyway, so that's the back of it right there. Forever free in the front. Solid uh, retro shirt. Well, I won't say that's vintage, but that's a retro shirt. And then we have, <clears throat> notice how all these are black. I like a lot of black ones because black is really 
good color. I think it's a universal color. When you think of 70s shirts and 80s shirts that are like retro or true vintage shirts, they're typically going to be, I mean, you can find some black ones, but they're going to be a little bit more like cream colors and um, beige, some really cool stuff like that. Um, so these are more black. This is what he had. So I was like, dude, this is just really good stuff for my booth. So I have to have it. Um, all right. So what's up, Adrian Molina? Good to see you. We have another one right here. Don't know the size. All that tag's gone. Big fat collar. Four Corners USA. A little shirt like this. Probably sold out of one of the stores that was close to that place. But uh, Four Corners is a place where, I don't know if there's it's part of the Grand Canyon or close to the Grand Canyon, but something like that where you can stand in this one place or this one quadrant and you can literally look in every direction and see a different state. So there's Four Corners USA, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. And uh, we have an Indian that has a spear. Really nice colors. Thought it was really good. So this would be an example of about a $20, $25 shirt in my booth right there. Pretty cool. Wonderful Waldo says, where do you find out about information about current garage sales? It's a really good question. So with that being said, let me just kind of show you the app that I use and everything. Everyone uses this. So on my phone right here in the lower corner, we have a thing called Yard Sale Treasure Map. It says YS. Looks like this one. It's booting up, right? Now we can look at Saturday and there's not much for Saturday going on, but you can kind of see that there's a bird's eye view of your town and um, the garage sales that are around it, right? And so you can click into one and it'll tell you whether it's a garage sale or an estate sale. So I'm gonna try to find a garage sale so I can kind of show you. Um, see, it's Monday, so there's not gonna be many. Garage sale, Pflugerville, here we go. Okay, so once you click on a garage sale, it'll give you like all the stuff that's in the garage sale, like that. And then you can decide whether to go to it or not. So this one says, lots of items to sell. This is 8 a.m. Um, well, this is actually last weekend. Chairs, shelf, dishes, antiques, TV, kitchen maid, mixer. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, toaster, oven, Wolf Bank, Wolfgang Puck Electric Grill. So that's how I kind of find out garage sales right now. I used to do the Craigslist way. And uh, when things get really scarce, I tend to still adopt the Craigslist way or, or as a supplement to this app. But guys, we're living in a digital age and everything is right here in the palm of your hands. So like, you know, the apps are really, really important. So go check that out. Yard sale, treasure map, really, really good stuff. And Craigslist is not reliable. I get it. Um, yard sale, treasure map is pretty reliable, but I'm going to give it about an, an 85 out of 100 score only because, and they put a disclaimer at the top of their sales for the most part. It says location may not, might not be accurate. Now I know here in Austin, Texas, when we do garage sales and stuff like that, there's at least two or three in a day that, will be completely different addresses than what they're stated or they'll put the pin drop somewhere and you think it's there then you look up the physical address that's in the ad and it's nowhere close to there so that's why i give it an 85 out of 100 outside of that when it comes to money making potential i would give it like a 100 out of 100 because without that app it would suck like i'd go back to craigslist which i can do i prefer the, i like the app a lot i just do so go check it out <laughs> you know it's an it's an awesome uh you know, app, like I said, if you hit me up like on Friday and we did the show on a Friday, there'd be like 20 times as many dots as this because now it's Monday. People are going to put up their garage fills and stuff like that around Wednesday or Thursday. And then you'll kind of get like, if you do Friday night, this is what I do. I go to bars or I go to random places. I whip out my phone. I sit there for like an hour and I make a list. That's just what I do. Um, so anyway, now sad to say like this Saturday, I will not be able to go to garage sales, but uh, it's okay. Um, go check it out. You know, it's one of those things. And even Friday morning garage shows, we have some of those in Austin, Texas as well. Okay, so we, we've looked at the shirts. We've looked at the boots. We've looked at the Brighton belt. we looked at the derby shoes. Here are some other things I found. This was $2. Not just to, like, rescue these things. I know it's only worth, like, five, bu five bucks on FBA. But I had to rescue it, okay? So don't be like, oh, Bonafide, you're just sinking money into stupid stuff. Like, I like rescuing these things. That's just what I, I like having a collection of these things. I probably have, hmm. I don't know. I'm looking back there right now, 20, 25, maybe 30 games. And some uh, there's a couple doubles, but for the most part, they're all different. So this is what I picked up. I rescued it. Now, if you grew up in the 80s, it's 1987, um, you probably played this game. If you were anywhere around NES, like, you probably played this. So the funny thing is it was sold back in the day for five bucks at some place. And the funny thing, it really hasn't gone up or down in price. It's still worth about five to seven dollars. So um yeah, RC Pro-Am. It's a good game. It's actually a really, really good game. It's really well done. Um, a lot of fun, right? So if you played this, you probably spent, played Excite Bike. You probably played, not OutRun because that was Genesis, but there was this other one, Rad Racer, right? Um, and this is just from 8-bit Nintendo NES, which was late 80s, and everyone had them. And it was the really, to my, I mean, to my knowledge, 
it was the really the first true like viral mainstream thing to hit the USA. Like, I mean, Atari was pretty popular too, but like when I'm talking like mainstream with like a ton of stuff behind it and supporting like media and magazines and maps and stuff like that. I mean, there was just no competing with Nintendo. Like there was just none. So um, anyway, thought it was cool. It's rescued. Yeah, I rescued it because, you know, it's sitting there in the sun and some, you know, probably some collector will get it after me and they'll just put it in a collection. But I'm not a collector of this stuff. I just, I, I was born in this time. I played a lot of this stuff and I like them. Like, I just like the look of a cartridge. It's just cool because everything's DLC these days. I like cartridges. Like, I'm going to make a cartridge wall probably over there in my office and I got to build certain like things for it, but I'm going to have them to where it just shows all the games like side by side and I'm going to fill up a whole wall with this stuff. Like, that's one of my goals. So I like it. Um, now, if I wasn't born in that time frame, I probably wouldn't care, but I was born in that time, and this is the only one I'm going to do the wall with. I won't do it with uh, N64 or any of those other ones because they just don't look as cool. Like this, to me, like is like a floppy disk. It's just really weird. It's vintage. It's totally cool. So got that uh, for a dollar. I got this game, which I plan to play on an Xbox 360. I've never played it before, but I've heard really good things about it. Arkham Asylum, which I think we can actually do a scan right now. Um, I don't think it's. I think it'll probably get me five bucks on FBA. Um, after I play it, but I, you know, I have a lot of 360 games. I have a ton of 360 games, and I still like the 360 as a system. I played Red Dead Redemption yesterday for like many hours. I like that game; it's a lot of fun. And the second version is coming out really soon. So I'm gonna scan this real quick. And Arkham Asylum for 360 is the Game of the Year edition. So it's just a, uh, you know, you're probably gonna find here we go, uh, Platinum Hits Game of the Year edition. My guess is it's gonna give me five bucks. Okay, it's gonna give me a dollar fifty. So there's no real. Unless you want to play it, you know, don't be buying this stuff. I'm just showing you what I found because I want to play it. Um, I have this game already, GTA V, which is still a very current day game where people are doing all kinds of like, they're still playing it, especially online. This one right here, I think on used is going to be um, $10. So that's not too bad, you know, like and this should be two discs in this. If I'm not mistaken, there should be two, maybe three actually. Two. All right, so two discs. So one's a, D, a download disc and the other one's like a story disc or something like that. So that one's still decent to look for. $10.16 on a used basis. Um, it's one eighty five in video games. But here's a kicker. I'm actually restricted on this, and I don't know why. So, you know, maybe on eBay, 10 bucks, and then we have this one. I've never played it, um, but I heard really good things about it. So Assassin's Creed, um, it's pre-owned. If you're ever sitting there in a garage, you're like, I can't scan it because this stupid thing's in the way. Look, guys, like, think outside the box. You got to go like this. Slide this thing down like that, and then now you can scan the game. See? I just pushed, pushed it down out of the sleeve a little bit. So that's just one of your... I'm sure everyone knew that, so I'm going to scan this one. Probably can't send this one in. There are a lot of restrictions going on at Amazon. It's probably going to yield me nothing, like 50 cents. Oh, I was right. 46 cents. And this one I can sell in used condition. So, you know, maybe it's a rock star game thing. I don't know, you know. But uh, don't give up hope on FBA. I just did an FBA shipment last week. And there was a lot of stuff in it, and I liked it. Um, I'm getting paid for it right now. I was just actually checking my home screen. And what did I sell? Um, I forgot. I can't, you, that's the only thing is like you can't really tell unless you get to the main app, the main thing on the website, like what you really truly, truly sold in like real time. Um, so anyways, those are the three games, dollar each, nothing crazy. When I was at a Savers, I picked this up for two bucks. I'm going to put this in my booth. Now, I don't know if this logo is for Zodiac, the actual boat thing that has, you know, the rubber things on the side or the inflatable rubber things on the side, but it was a cool trucker hat. It says Zodiac on it. It's made by Sport Cap, which has a very, like, vintage-looking tag to it. So I thought it was pretty good. Um, Garage Slip says, hey, it's getting harder and harder to make money on Xbox 360 games. It's true. Don't. If I could give you like a kind of a blanketed approach to most things, I would just say just kind of stick, stay away from it. Um, look for more uh, PS1 games. Mm, yeah, PS1 games. Look for if you're lucky enough to find some Turbo Graphics 16 ones. Like look for that. Look for some Neo Geo stuff. Look for N64, GameCube, certain Wii games, um, and of course rescue every single 8-bit Nintendo cartridge you get. Anyway, so that's that right there. Thought it was a pretty good find. I'm going to ask about 20 to 30 in the booth for this. It's in good condition. Nice, like, you know, colors to it. And somebody that knows what Zodiac is will just buy it. So thought it was a pretty good one, right? Trucker hat, right? Trucker hat, high crown. It's kind of like what it, this is what I'm wearing right now. So high crown trucker hats or high crown right there. 
can see. And trucker hats always have that like really nice square look right here. Completely different than a tennis hat, dad hat, workout hat, uh, you know, one of those things. So trucker hats will always be you know, mesh in the front or mesh in the back, foam in the front. Um, and then they'll have usually a snap back here. So it'll be a snap back. So $20, $30 hat right there all day. And now I'm going to go into the coolest parts of the $30 haul. I, I like this a lot. And I, what's the first thing that comes to your head when you see this, okay? So let me know. The first thing. Because the first thing that came to my mind was like, holy crap, really? So let me know what you think, okay? This is the first thing I bought. Um, this is all, you know, part of the $30 haul. This. What's the first thing you thought about when you saw this? Go ahead and type it. I don't, I don't care what you... Just tell me what you thought because I know what I thought. And I'm pretty sure you guys thought the same as I did. So there's that. I'm going to put this in my booth for, and I don't know if this is, like, I don't think it's Bakelite or anything, um, but this is a uh, copyright. Someone help me out with some Roman numeral stuff here. But it says MCMLXX. What is that? I think M is 1,000. Uh, C before M is like 1,000 minus 100, I'm thinking, right? What's MCMLXX? Um, what is L? I don't know what L is, but I'm going to have to say that this is MCM, so 1900 LXX, whatever that is, let me know. 1970, okay, because I thought L would be a 50 at least, and XX means 1010. So cool, 1970, thought that was pretty good. Yeah, psychedelic, that's right, guys. Alice in Wonderland, drugs, there you go. That's the right, that's the right thing right there. Shrooms, exactly. So that's what I was thinking too. LXX is 70, right? Yeah, so thanks, guys, for helping me out on that. I mean, I know my Roman numerals a little bit. I'm just... On a whim, I was kind of like, I don't really know it, but I kind of do if you start thinking about it. So anyway, uh, that was the first thing I found. I thought this was killer, man. I really like this stuff. Like, I think it's cool. I don't do it, but I like it. It's a very colorful looking thing uh, made out of very hard plastic. I mean, extremely hard. And I doubt it's Bakelite or anything like that, but this was a really good one. I'm going to be asking somewhere in the vicinity of 40 to 80 for this thing. Like, you might be thinking that's bonkers, okay? But just trust me. When you see it in real life, it's really cool. It comes out, you know, it, it's actually... 3d so that's neat not some pictures some mushrooms or anything like that garage flows that that's badass i'm telling you this is badass i got another badass one down here that's like really cool too so that was the first one i thought that was sick like i was like okay i gotta get that for my booth that's perfect so the next one is this and this is a little bit more it's still 3d right but it's a little bit more 2d than a 3d right but i thought that was pretty killer as well and uh, this is made about the you know, same material and everything like that. This one says Homco on the back. No real year to it. Um, but I would assume since it was so close to that other one that uh, we would be very close in the time frame. This one says Homco. There's no new year. And it's just neat. It has little hooks on the back so you can put it on a wall. Which one do you like better? All right. <laughs> Night required, Phil. I don't do it, but I like it. I do. I can appreciate the drug culture. I just don't do it. Um, I mean, the most that I'll ever do will be like edibles or something like that, right? Um, and by edibles, I mean like basic marijuana stuff. None of that graduating into the crazy stuff, right? So this is pretty cool. Very nice. I'm actually going to Colorado soon. Check it out. I'll be actually doing that vlog on my other channel. So I thought it was pretty good. What do you guys like? Which one do you like better? Like which one's the better one here? Who do we have in the house here? I got a bunch of people. So which one would you prefer? Let's say money wasn't an issue and you're like, I got it. I'm taking one of these things from Bonafide. Like, which one would you take? Honestly, we got this one or we got this one. What should I charge for that one? What do you guys think? I thought that was a pretty solid one right there. That's so cool. I mean, the first one's so cool. I know. That's what I'm saying. Garage Flips is with me on the first one. Like, the first one's just awesome. Look at that. Back looks like this. Yeah, the shrooms are killer. So 40 to 80 on the shrooms all day. Like, I'm going to try to really hold out for that one. That might be a really good long tail one to hold out for this one right here probably closer to 40 for me you know thought it was a pretty good one so anyway um pretty nice we have uh we got mushrooms we got frogs we have a butterfly we have leaves i don't know what the hell this thing is i think these are just what is this what is this white thing is it are these like it looks like something that's like under the sea but this is clearly above land so that's what spore things i don't know i don't know what those things are is it just a plant of some sort what do you guys think? These are booth items. Yes, Garage Flip. You are right. These are booth items. Yeah. Is it coral? <laughs> Garage Flip says it, I think it looks like coral. Yeah, but why would it be coral when everything's above ground? 
See, I need you. I need your help, guys. I, I really do. Not that it really matters, but for me to like really appreciate it, I kind of have to know what everything is. You know, like I know everything except for this stupid thing. Like I don't know what this is. So, um, so that, that queer, night required feels the saying list the frog one on eBay, super fast, ninety nine dollar auction. I, mean, I guess I could. I'll look it up. So. You guys can help me out too in the feed. What is Homco plastic, whatever? It's H O M C O. If you have a suggestion or maybe you analyzed it while I'm doing this show, fungi. Yeah, fungi. That's what it is. Okay, so it's fungi. It's like spore things. So let me know. Homco, H O M C O. You guys get to work. Get to work, Hustler Army. Help me out. All right. So that's that. See. Solid pickups, man. I'm talking. These are solid pickups from a garage sale. If you're, if you don't have a booth, honestly, you should have still bought those mushroom things and that other stuff. It does not matter. Those vintage shirts, you should have still bought them. Like you don't have to have a booth to move this stuff. I just happen to have one that's really good, but you don't have to have that. I'm showing you stuff that you can put on eBay right here. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's talk about something else. So um, some of you guys might know about this guy named Orange Elephant Five Two Three. His name is Brock. He lives in Austin, Texas. Actually, he lives 10 miles north of me, something like 10 minutes north of me. So he's in Le Leander, which is close to Austin. Anyways, him and I do business on a 50-50 basis. Like, uh, So he gives me stuff for my booth that I didn't find. Like, He gives it to me, and he's like, all right, 50-50 on this stuff. Cool. And so um, Adam A517, hold on. Let me, let me stop real quick. Adam A57 says, did you pay $2 for the mushroom thing? No, it was just part of a $30 haul. So, um, anyways, so Brock and I are doing business and, um, I paid him like just this morning, like $28 or something on eBay or no, PayPal for things that I've sold in the past two weeks in my booth. So here he's dropping some stuff off and I put it to the booth. And that's okay. Nothing crazy. And then he dropped this off, which I might put to eBay and I'll still give him half of it, but this is a maintenance manual for half ton, one and a half ton or four by two chassis Dodge trucks. It's for the U S army. If you look at comps on this, they're around. 30 to 35 bucks. So I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll try to move it and I'll pay him. So a little maintenance manual on everything. It's really unmarked, so it's nice, nice condition. But uh, the year's got to be definitely super old because I have not seen one of these things in a very long time. So um, pretty interesting, right? Thought I was going to, I'm definitely going to move that. This, I will, uh, it's a stack of Traxxas remote control uh, truck pieces, more than likely for a T-Max. Now there's some you know, there's some pieces that have barcodes in here, so I want to, you know, assess those appropriately with FBA. Might send them in, but they're also probably dealing with T-Maxes or Jados, which were part of their Nitro line. And uh, the Nitro stuff is just not in really in high demand right now. But then again, we're also living in a time where, you know, if someone wants a part really quickly and their hobby store doesn't have it for their radio-controlled car or truck, they're going to probably go to eBay and go to Amazon. Now, if there happens to be an Amazon one with a prime listing, they're going to be like, holy crap, I'll just buy it. Because people that break radio-controlled stuff typically want to fix it pretty quickly. So we have all kinds of stuff here. We have bulkheads. We have A-arms. We have turnbuckles and all kinds of stuff. I'll assess this. I don't think I'm going to be putting them to FBA. I don't think I'm going to be doing anything with them at all. But in the you know event that I see maybe one that's like 300K rank or below and I can send it in in new condition, I will probably send some of these in. We'll see. So we'll check that out right there later. Um, this was a saver's find for very cheap, actually. This was uh, 10 bucks. Um, I used a 30% off coupon that day. I think I did. Maybe I didn't. Okay, so 10 bucks. I think eMoney bought it. I found it at Savers, and eMoney and I try to, you know, relatively s split our garage sale finds through the day. And he was kind of below on things that he found. So I gave this to him. I found it in the toy section. It's a projector of some sort. Uh, $10. See, this thing when you deal with FBA, you don't have to know exactly what everybody, everything is. If you see plastic and you see it sealed, scan it up. So this one had pretty good rank, um, yielding after fees, like net check, like 56 bucks or something like that. So that's pretty good with a good, I wouldn't even, this is between like very fast and mid tier. So it's not a mid tier rank and it's not a long tail. It's right in the middle of like fast selling and mid tier. So pretty cool in plastic, good condition barcode right there. And that's what I scanned at the thrift store when I saw it in the toy section. Um, two last things I want to show you guys. If you ever get around to, um, and the funny thing is I've had these in my possession for at least three months. And just the other day, I'm like, you know what? I just need to put everything in the antique booth that belongs to the antique booth. I remembered I had these in a little bin down here, like at the very bottom of a bin. So it was easy to get lost. And I got lost for a little bit. I went to a garage sale. Um, when was it? Three months ago, four months ago. And I found a 
ton of belt buckles. I think it was like for two bucks. And um, I think six or eight, five or seven of them already made it to the booth. They're there. But I was doing some on-the-spot research on certain ones and uh, or all of them really quickly. And you can do that kind of stuff quickly on eBay. Um, but I, I stayed with these two. And I was like, all right, this is probably going to be a little bit more mid-tail, long tail on eBay. But we have 1975 Bergamot Brassworks. Um, we have one that kind of seems like a cannon with some cannonballs and I don't know. It could be very South Carolina-ish or something like that. Pretty solid belt buckle. So not, you know, I'm probably going to try to ask somewhere between 30 and 50 for this. It's a solid brass belt buckle. Pretty nice. 30 to 50. Thought it was a good one. And then we have this vintage AM one, which is a college in Texas that rivals basically UT. Or there used to be a rivalry. I don't rivalry, I don't know about it anymore, but this is a 1975 um, AM belt buckle. I think the last one that sold was somewhere between 30 and 50 as well. So I might hold on to this one and sell it on eBay. So it's pretty good. Um, but like I said, there was five to seven that made it to my booth the other day. So those are all in the booth. They're sitting in a you know little container that has a bunch of belt buckles and stuff. And I did put some of Brock's belt buckles in there as well that he had found. So that's pretty much it. I think that's the last part of the haul that I wanted to show you guys. There's always something that I forget every single time. There's always something. In fact, last time it was, oh, uh, there was something in my garage that I, it was just on the floor. As soon as I walked in, I was like, oh, I never showed that. So anyways, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like. I don't, I didn't ask for it at all in this video. So hit the like button for sure. We have 67 viewers in the house. If you didn't see the whole thing, go check it out. And tell me what your favorite find was from today. I think definitely my favorite find from the haul for the past weekend from thrift stores, garage sales, whatever, was definitely, definitely the mushroom thing. So I thought it was pretty good. And I'm willing to wait it out for that one to get, you know, 50 to 80 or even we'll see if I, I don't think I, 100 is too much. But like somewhere between 50 and 80, some like little hipster person that loves that stuff is going to probably buy that. So thanks a lot, guys. It's good to see everybody and um, definitely going to start pumping out more content. I uh, got a vacation coming up, so I'm going to try to like get content lined up so it's dropping behind the scenes while I'm gone. But that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Don't forget to hit the like button. And I'll see you later. Bye.